Global with your work as skill， 那从呃从一个 freelancer 到怎么样接到国外的案，对，不只是仅限于台湾，然后就是欢迎他的分享。Going global with your WordPress skills, and if you're ready, let's get started. I'm Yuan Chen. I do WordPress development for a living, and I have been freelancing for more than ten years. And、uh, I currently based in this beautiful city and country,、uh, Taipei, Taiwan. It's my first work camp and also my first time、uh, public English presentation. So I was I'm quite nervous about it,、uh, but I'll try my best. So please bear with me, and I hope the information will be helpful and valuable to your own freelancing career. So in the following thirty minutes, I'd like to share that、uh, how I grew my business. From serving small organizations in Taiwan to a global audience,、uh, who now ninety-five、uh, percent of them are based in the United States and Europe, and all of this happened in roughly four years. So、uh, let's start by、uh, checking what my business was like in late two thousand thirteen. So back then, I have been freelancing and mostly focusing on、uh, custom WordPress development, and I、uh, have been for years. And I work with、uh, local governments, universities, and small businesses and organizations in Taiwan. So here is a quick list of my past clients, and some of them are still my clients. But as you can see. They're all based in Taiwan,、uh, so I think actually back then I had like zero connection、uh, with foreign clients. But、uh, you might be thinking, what has changed that, right? So what I was doing not bad.、Uh, the idea of reinventing my business was also developed around the same time.、Um, so there were. A couple of reasons for that,、um, and some of them are on the economic side. So,、uh, for example, I felt、uh, during the time local market went quite slow, and I got fewer inquiries than before. And also, I found it very hard to increase product sizes. But there were also some positive factors that I actually.、Uh, I think I was much more confident in the future in WordPress because when I was working with my clients, I think each and every time they're、uh, you know like they love it and they got used to it very quickly.、Uh, so、uh, I think that also indicated I did the right job, right? Because I helped sell WordPress to a new group、uh, of audience. Okay.、Uh, thus,、uh, based on such,、uh, you know, like I was. Quite、uh, proud of myself, so I wanted to be seen to be recognized in the global press、uh, community. So,、uh, started、uh, from 2014, I did a few things. I created a blog in English,、uh, which is onefix.io, and that's also my Twitter handle. And I also、uh, created a few uh, plugins uh, on WordPress.org, and、uh, I believe that、uh, there were like five or six of them, and you can still find them there. And I also signed up for several、uh, WordPress online group and、uh, forums. And 
Besides marketing myself as a professional WordPress developer on the internet, I also uh, try my best to learn how to run my uh, freelance business in the Western world. And uh, in that sense, I couldn't possibly miss out materials and courses uh, by Paul Jobs, and which is the creative class. And also the other classes uh, that we were freelancing by Brandon Dunn. So these courses have really solid and you know like they help me greatly because after uh, to taking this course I basically have a totally different perspective to uh, my own uh, freelance career. So for example I learned how to position how, uh, like, what's my niche in the WordPress market, and who's my audience. So, um, I learned a lot, but uh, things still take time. So uh, after that, I, I think I still spend around one and a half years to uh, keep generating and uh, creating uh, content on my blog. And uh, I met a lot of uh, great um, freelancers around the world uh, whom I met from the creative class community and also my own blog okay so uh, thankfully uh, I got noticed and I started to uh, get my first few gigs from those sources I just mentioned so um, the budgets were like uh, $800 to $2,000 so they were uh, actually quite relatively small projects, right? But uh, projects like those uh, actually helped me to build up my confidence because I knew uh, I was capable of working with foreign clients. And uh, yeah, and again, I think I got a lot of positive feedback from them. So uh, I was very certain I was on the right track. Thus, I basically just want to keep things going and then I just uh, lean in by saying yes to all or every opportunity okay so um, in the rest of the talk I'd like to you know like it will be more like story time and I'd like to share t uh, like three personal stories about uh, there were three very important opportunities uh, when they came and I have said yes. And then I think uh, they changed my professional life drastically. Okay? Um, so uh, the first one I'd like to share is uh, how I work with Laura Elizabeth and her great product, Climb Portal. And um, the second one would be uh, how I became a global expert. The last one is about how, how I work for uh, Gravity Flow and Gravity Forms. So here we go. The first story is about Client Portal. So uh, this is the uh, very tweet that uh, I learned uh, Laura was looking for a WordPress developer. And uh, yeah, so I just uh, sent an email to uh, ask for more details. and. Um, what's funny is that uh, I realized that Laura was also on the Creative Class community. So because we have a uh, Slack group, so I just ping her there and uh, yeah, I ask things around. And uh, and luckily, I, I think we had a very uh, you know like um, pleasant conversation that I I think he uh, she have have has mentioned that. She felt uh, the way I communicated with her is totally different uh, from the other developers uh, she had interviewed during that time. So uh, luckily, I got the job. Uh, she hired me right after our first chat. And so about Client Portal, um, which is a uh, great product, uh, it helps freelancers look professional by uh, simplifying the onboarding process and uh, organizing the deliverables much more elegantly. So uh, this, you can see the beautiful design here. Uh, our website is client-portal.io. Uh, you can 
check it out and uh, see the beautiful design from Laura and uh, her very solid uh, writing skills on those sales pages, okay? And um, Laura has, uh, I think she built the first version of client portal herself, which was just a HTML template, and uh, I helped her to turn it into a uh, premium WordPress plugin. And this case is uh, meaningful to myself. It's not only because it's my first premium WordPress plugin, and uh, of course it brought uh, significant income, you know, like financially successful uh, to my freelance career. But also, like, uh, during the process, because I help uh, the, uh, to deal with some customer service, so I realized that as a developer, it's really essential that uh, for you to have this opportunity to talk directly with your uh, customers. And uh, based on that, you can improve your product much more quickly and efficiently. Okay, so uh, this is about uh, my, yeah, experience with the uh, client portal. If you have any question, you can ask me later uh, in the QA time, okay? Okay, so uh, the second story will be about uh, how I joined Codebo. So Codebo, um, you know like, uh, okay, I think, let me put it this way. Um, back in 2016, uh, I was looking for more project to work on, so I reached out to a client of mine um, whom I met from a blog. So. Yeah, so uh, he suggested me to try a few professional uh, platforms like uh, Crew, okay? And so I tried it. But I got rejected like right away. And they just uh, sent me an email and said, oh, you are not a good fit for our platform. Um, okay, then I just moved on to another few. And I think uh, Code was like the third or maybe second platform I tried. But <laughs> it's funny that I actually waited like six months to hear back from them. So it's quite a long time and I didn't actually expect they will still contact me, but uh, thank God they, they eventually did that. And uh, I still don't know why it took so long, but uh, yeah, but uh, no worries about that because nowadays it usually takes just one week. Okay, if you are going to submit your application there, you should be uh, hear back from the Codebo staff very soon. And so one day I woke up uh, and see this very email that from uh, Raleigh, uh, who's the Codebo staff, and he just basically asked me to choose a test project so I can advance to the next stage. So um, about the screening process on Codable, uh, basically it includes the application, which is a form you submit on their website, and then if you pass that, they will ask you to choose a test project, and that will based on your role. So if you're a designer or you are a developer, you, uh, you will be assigned to different projects, and that makes sense, right? And if you pass that, uh, you will be interviewed by a Codebo CEO or other Codebo staff, and uh, lastly, you will have a live coding test. And if you pass them all, uh, you will be able to start your trial on Codebo, and that usually takes 45 days. And uh, I think it's worth to know that during a trial period, you will be, uh, you can charge and you will be paid as all certified expert, which means you won't get paid less during your trial period, and I think that's it, kind of unique and uh, yeah, and that shows Codebo uh, really respects uh, all applicants. Okay, and in addition to that, um, 
we experts are expected to use a minimum hourly rate uh, starts from $60. And we also have a don't do bidding policy uh, that's, uh, you know, like, is my favorite, okay? So, yeah, so let me elaborate a little about the don't do bidding policy. So, for example, uh, there are several experts uh, compete for the same project. And supposedly they will submit, uh, submit different uh, quotes or estimates, right? But eventually the client can only see one final price. And that final price is actually the average of all uh, submitted quotes, okay? So the client cannot decide who he'd like to hire based on the price. And such mechanism can I think it effectively prevents all experts to race to a button, right? Because sometimes when you are on the other platform, you can see people just uh, bid for a very unreasonable low price to get hired. And thus, I, I always feel like this is definitely one of the, mo uh, the reason why uh, Coco is so successful. And uh, when you are a expert on Codable, you are not just a partner, you are also their client because they also charge 10% of contractor fee from you. Thus, I believe and I really do feel they try their best to serve you, okay? So um, I think we have a very uh, solid expert community that we have a Slack group and also a discussion board so whenever you have any questions, you can just go there and ask your fellow experts. And people will just jump in and answer your question. It's very cool. And everyone is really passionate about helping each other. And also, sometimes things just go south, right? Uh, so uh, inevitably, uh, you will have some disputes with your clients or Sometimes something happens in your life, you need to take a break from your work. And when that happens, you can just reach out to Kobo staff and ask for help. And then they will, they usually just uh, step in as soon as possible and they will help you to sort things out. Yeah, so I personally use that kind of service several times and I always feel uh, very impressed and appreciate what they did. Okay, so to make it more uh, appealing and try to uh, convince you is a very great, uh, great platform. So let me share with you some numbers because numbers don't lie. So um, the first number comes from our, you know, like one of our best expert, Nathan Allo. Uh, I think he wrote a blog post about his first two years on Codebo and uh, yeah, and he said the first year revenue on Codebo is like 131 grants uh, in US dollars, which is a huge amount of money. And he also uh, bought a Lamborghini with those income, so I think it's pretty cool. And you can just uh, check out that post by Googling uh, Nathan Yellow Codebo. Yeah, you can see this very famous uh, blog post about it. And uh, the second number comes from myself and I think it's much less impressive but I have an excuse because I don't, you know, like I, I'm not full time on Kobo, I still have other uh, income sources and the number is 43,000. It's my, uh, in USD dollars and so that's my first year income on Kobo. And uh, currently my Average project size uh, on Codebo is around $1,400, which I can usually finish uh, and get paid in two weeks. Okay, so uh, if you have any question regarding Codebo, uh, feel free to ask later uh, in the queue time. And the last story, I'd like to share is about gratitude flow and gratitude forms. So, um, yeah, so after I joined Codebo, 
One day, I saw a project posted by Steve Henty. Um, I was really eager to respond because I know Steve uh, is the uh, founder of Gravity Flow and also the lead developer of uh, Gravity Forms. So I just try my best to uh, ask all kinds of questions to uh, yeah, try to impress him. But eventually he chose a, another expert over me. And uh, oh, but I, I think he, he's quite nice because he uh, basically told me that the next project uh, he posted will be mine. Yeah, and he did it. Yeah, so uh, a few days later, I actually uh, got notified uh, he created a new project. So that's how we uh, get started to work together on Gratitude Flow. So, yeah, so let me uh, talk a little bit about Gravity Flow. Uh, Gravity Flow uh, is a business automation tool. So we can picture that uh, some, somehow it, it, like, it's like a Zapier for WordPress system, okay? So if you, uh, if you use Gravity Flow, sorry, Gravity Forms to take submissions, you can make, uh, basically uh, automate your later process with Gravity Flow. So for example, uh, you can approve entries, you can ask your uh, users to input more details, or you can even you know, like connect several different forms and if they stay in the same uh, process, okay? And recently we even uh, released a new expansion, which is uh, a WooCommerce extension, and then you can automate your WooCommerce uh, orders with Gravity Flow. So it's pretty cool. Uh, please check it out. The website is gravityflow.io. So um, lastly, um, I think after a while, uh, Steve kindly introduced me to Team uh, Rocket Genius, uh, which is the parent company of Gravity Forms. So uh, I have joined the developer team as a contractor for more than uh, around eight, uh, eight months, I, I think, yeah. And I, you know, like, <laughs> I feel I learned so much uh, from those developers uh, because Everyone uh, in this team are much experienced than myself. So, uh, with you know, like project by project, I just learned a lot of different new uh, developer skills from them. So, I'm really grateful and uh, appreciate to have that opportunity to uh, be part of the team. Yeah. So, um, if you have any question regarding uh, Gradual or Grad Forms. Uh, Feel free to ask later in the QA time, okay? So, um, here comes my last three slides and I'd like to share some final thoughts, okay? So, uh, the goal of this talk is to show you what it would look like when you freelance globally. And, uh, while I feel uh, freelancing is really awesome, right? But uh, what's even better is you can work with remote clients, okay? Because people who hire remotely, they don't micromanage. They just don't. Because, uh, you know, like, kind of like, it's by, by its nature, if they uh, have such uh, insecure personality, they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't even hire someone uh, they didn't know or uh, in a different time zone or in different country, right? So I always feel very uh, relaxed when I work with my remote clients, okay? And uh, when you have a healthy client base, especially when you have clients globally, you can have a much more steady income stream because you can somehow uh, like invoicing every week. And when you can do that, uh, I believe that can definitely help you to break the uh, notorious feast or famine cycle, right? So uh, I personally really feel that my cash flow, my finance situation is much, much better after I uh, turn um, freelancing globally. 
And uh, based on what I've seen on Codable, I just wanted to assure you that as long as you have a solid WordPress skill and uh, it, your English is better than okay, uh, just like mine, right? And yeah, and I assure you that um, tens of thousands of projects around the world are waiting for you, okay? So please don't let any barrier, may it be language barrier or self-doubt, stop you, okay? So just go for it, just do whatever you can do. And lastly, um, oh, what happened? Sorry. So lastly, the ultimate goal today is that I'd like to see uh, if some of you will be uncodable in the near future, okay? So um, please go home and write your best resume and submit today or anytime soon, okay? And if you have any question, uh, please reach out to me online, offline. I'd love to help uh, anytime, okay? And uh, so that's it. That's all. That's my first WordCamp talk. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining me again, and uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Jordan. Um, is there anyone have questions to her? Jordan? No? Oh, if, if no one has, it, can I ask you a question? Oh, so, okay. yeah. Um, so, I like you. So I like to understand because right, a lot of people think language is better, but I think language is something you have to improve yourself. No one can help you on that. But uh, the other thing is like you know when you start reaching out to like portal or client portal, how did you start to engage with them? Like you know, did, did you have already have a strategy in mind? Like what do you want to talk to them? How to impress them to get the job? Oh, okay. So, yeah. Cool. So um. So I didn't particularly mention about how I sharpen my uh, English skills. Yeah, because uh, I think from my presentation, you can understand that before then, I mean, when I, you know, like, uh, I was a uh, very experienced freelancer, but basically in Taiwan, and I don't really use English every day, but, uh, when I made the decision that I know someday I'd like to serve a more broad audience, I just do a lot of things, and that's I think that's the most uh, important reason why I created a blog in English because I want to sharpen my writing skills in English. Okay, and I also mentioned that it actually took me like one and uh, one and a half years to work on that and so by the time I try to reach out uh, to Laura or Codable, I think my uh, writing skill in English is good enough that they don't really um, aware that English is not my primary language. Yeah, so, uh, so I think that um, it takes that you as, I, as I've mentioned that, you need to have a very solid WordPress skill. Uh, no matter you learn that based on in your mother language, right? Like in Taiwan, we use Mandarin. But um, yeah, but if you do feel like um, you want to talk to a different target audience and they use different language than you, for example, if you'd like to uh, work with people who say, uh, who speak in Japanese or Taiwanese, you must try your best to learn how to communicate it in their language. But the, uh, you still need to do a work on uh, working on the core skill, right? So I think they are both important and they both take time. Yeah, so I, I'm not sure if I answer your question, but that's what I, like to say, yeah. Uh, then my second question is, or, or like you know, people are codable. Like, what did you, what did you talk to them? Like, how did you initiate the conversation? Yeah, because like, to us, sometimes like you know that guy is your employer or your 
future employer or the, the person who's a decision maker, but how do you start a conversation with a stranger? The situation would be different when, so for example, Codebo is a platform, right? So when I initiate the talk, of course, I just submit a form that's made by them, so I'm not quite worried about that. But I do feel really nervous when they interview me, yeah. But to Laura, I think um, it's interesting because uh, when I start to uh, approach Laura, and by the time I've had, uh, I've already had a few uh, experiences uh, to work on small projects, right? So I think by the time I've, I've already learned um, like how to initiate the talk, okay? So I think it's very similar to what, you, what, what you're doing in your primary language, right? So you always reach out and say who you are and uh, you know they are looking for some specific role for a specific job, right? But my suggestion is that the best you can do is you focus on them, not yourself. You know, not like you talk a lot of what I have done and I'm so good at what, things like that is not necessary. You, the best you can do is focus on their needs, what they really, because sometimes when they say, oh, I need a worldwide developer, but develop what? Develop what kind of product? Who, who's your audience of the product? Who's, uh, how much you will charge? Uh, do you have any estimates, any uh, timeline, things like that? You just uh, focus on what they need, what they are looking for. And when you can dig really deeper with very basic language, uh, English, back vocabulary or words. They don't even care if you are fluent or not, but I assure you they will be very impressed. Okay? So I hope that can answer your question. Yeah. Okay. okay, go. Yeah. Did anyone have questions? Okay. Um, it's, a, it's a casual question. Uh, because um, when I when you talk about your income, I I feel really interested. About okay. <laughs> the numbers, I mean, um, when I see uh, you you said that your average project project size is around one thousand four hundred yeah. US dollar, yeah. and average annual uh, income is around forty thousand something. Yeah. And when I do a simple calculation, you have to take around around 30 something projects per year. And I think, yeah. wow, it's really a great number. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that means uh, you have to finish the project very efficiently, yeah. um, maybe uh, one closing one project a week, and yeah. uh, in order to have a two weeks vacation to go around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So is it the real case? That means uh, you, you work on Codable and uh, you close a project uh, in average for one week or maybe shorter? Maybe shorter, maybe shorter. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's a 30 something projects per year. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Everyone, I, I, I hope, I, I think, oh sorry. I think um, a lot of experts did much better than me. So that's what I want to address. You know, like there are tens of thousands of projects there. So yeah, yeah. The, the only the only thing stop you is base. I am not sure, but I always feel like, especially for people in Taiwan or in Asia, language is the only thing to stop them, right? They, but they, if they can know that the project is there, please, the project is there. So uh, as, back, uh, as long as you can pass all the, you know, like with screening process, you just jump in and you will see. It's like, you know, like uh, in Chinese we say, project, <laughs> okay, so please, uh, yeah, I, I just really want to uh, kind of sell this idea. I, I think uh, the feast and famine or famine cycle, it is very scary to every, uh, freelancer, right? Sometimes you just work so hard and you don't have any time uh, for your personal life. 
But sometimes you don't have any job and you just cry. Why this happened to me? Things like that. But you don't have to. You just need to go to a very healthy and you know like the platform they really uh, respect everyone and especially you know like during the screening process they try to schedule a time for me uh, because you know like uh, the team is all around the world and. Uh, in the beginning, they can find a good uh, time frame for me. Yeah, so they just try to uh, try their uh, best to arrange the time, and uh, eventually they find a uh, a time. But like I, I think it's in my day uh, daytime. Yeah, it's not because I've tried other platform, and you have to have the interview in very early, like two or three a.m. Or you need to, you know, like they just don't care. Where are you? Who you are? But it's totally different on Kobo. So that's why I really highly recommend. And please, or can I beg you? Please just submit your uh, application there. Okay. Thank you. Um, so yeah, let's have a short break, like around five minutes break, and the next session will start at three.